All right, so this is a tutorial, the first of a series of tutorials about creating a waffle model from um, a closed volume solid um, an, of an arbitrary shape uh, for eventual laser cutting. In this video, I'm going to go over uh, how to create the, the main sliced geometry that will use in subsequent videos to uh, set up laser cut geometry and also to create um, uh, geometry that can be used for rendering uh, this for diagrammatic purposes. So I'm going to start with this uh, surface that I generated um, previously and um, the main command for slicing this geometry is the contour command and the contour command uh, can uh, work in a number of different ways. For the sake of a waffle model, we want it to actually generate slices in that are perpendicular uh, to each other. And um, in the case of this model, I want those slices to be um, to match the edges of my surface, in other, uh, which is um, square uh, in plan. So. I'm going to be very specific about how I tell the contour command to slice up this object. Um, so the first thing I do is select the object and hit enter. And so now it wants a base point. The base point is the starting point for the series of contours that it will create. And um, so I'm going to pick a corner, it doesn't matter which one. And now in the case of a waffle model, my uh, my object is positioned in Rhino such that I can use orthogonal geometry or orthogonal dimensions in Rhino to uh, tell it which direction to cut my object. So because of that, I can just hold down Shift. When I hold down Shift, it locks my uh, mouse or the, the direction of the line that I'm drawing as a, as a reference for the direction. Uh, it holds it to the uh, X and Y uh, dimensions. Now, uh, in addition to specifying a direction, I also need to establish the, the length uh, uh, within which, or the distance within which it creates contours. So I want to limit that to the other edge um, of my geometry. So I'm going to hold down Shift and then uh, well, I'm going to, while I'm holding down shift, press the tab key. And what that does is it locks my, um, my line to the, uh, the vector or the, the line that I had it on while I was holding down shift. And that will override any, uh, any kind of object snap so that when I highlight this corner, it's not going to, um, uh, pop the line up to that corner. It's just going to align it uh, as close as it can um, with the line that I'm, or with the geometry of my object. So that way I can click the edge of my geometry and know that my line here is orthogonal in the XY plane. Also, um, before I run the or the um, contour command, I want to make sure that the curves that result are joined. So I'm going to use the join curves option and I'm going to say um, by contour plane because I want them to be joined um, as slices in the same plane. So I'm going to keep that option and then when I hit enter, it creates all of those slices for me. Now actually, um, I'm going to go ahead and group these. I, there's an option with the contour command that will allow me to create the group. I think it will allow me to create the grouping uh, for me, but in any case. Um, so now I have one dimension or one um, direction for my slices, and so now I just need to do the same thing in the other direction. So same process, contour command, Oops, contour, selecting the object, hit enter, and now I'm going to pick uh, or draw a line in the uh, 
90 degrees from the other line that I drew, which was this way. So now I'm going to go this way, hold down shift, press tab, line it up with the other corner, and let's see here, group objects by contour plane? No, I don't want to do that. Uh, just the join. So uh, I'm going to hit enter again. It's going to slice in the other direction. So uh, you'll notice I didn't specify a distance. That's because it was already um, set from a previous uh, last time I ran this command. And I'm running it here at uh, half an inch. So when you, when you run the contour command, be sure that the distance between contours is set. Uh, then uh, because my geometry is contained within a one foot square uh, area in plan, uh, those contours then line up exactly with the edges of my uh, geometry. Now um, I could approach this a little bit differently. Say I didn't want the my um, slices to actually line up with the edge and I want them to be inset a little bit. What I could do, I'm going to undo those contour uh, commands that I did before. I'm going to create a rectangle that matches the dimensions of my object in plan. And so I'm going to use a similar, uh, well, with the rectangle command, I don't actually have to hold down shift or, um, or use the tab to, to lock my dimensions. I can line it up with this other corner because the rectangle command automatically constrains my rectangle to the plane, the construction uh, plane, or the XY plane in this case. So I'm just going to draw that rectangle, which now uh, matches the um, extremes of my geometry. And now I'm going to use that, uh, I'm going to offset it, I'm going to offset it a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to tell it to offset it inward. So now I have a rectangle that is offset a quarter of an inch inside. Oops. And now when I look at it from the top, you can see it's, set in, it's inset. Now I'm going to use that geometry instead as my guide for how I create my contours. In order to do that, I need to first select my geometry and start the contour command. And now I'm going to use that new rectangle as my guide geometry, uh, just starting in one corner and reaching to the other corner. And so this is my guide geometry. I don't need to hold down shift or tab because I'm using this as my guide geometry. And I do have object snap turned on, so it's just snapping to the end or the corner of my guide geometry. So when I do that, I'm going to keep the distance between contours the same and uh, hit enter. And so now you can see that the slices are still half an inch apart uh, because the distance is still half an inch between contours. Uh, but because I used that inset guide geometry, now the first slice is only a quarter of an inch, well, is a quarter of an inch in from the edge on one end and the same on the other end. Uh, so now I'll do that in the other direction as well. Contour. Actually, I need to group these lines first. Um, hang on. Let's grab these lines. I'm going to use my selection filter. That's a selection filter here. I'm going to turn off poly surfaces uh, so that I can just select these lines. All right. And I'm going to group those for later. And now I'm going to go back. Oops and run the contour command again, just verifying which direction it needs to be contoured in. Um, okay, polysurface, contour, base point, now I'm going the opposite, or the perpendicular direction, and hitting enter. Okay, so now we've got the same thing where my edge slices are quarter of an inch inset from the edge. All right, so once again, um, I'm going to select just that geometry so I can group it. I should have not deselected that first. Um, I want is this, and there. Okay, now I'm gonna group this geometry. And now uh, 
I can copy that off to the side just so that um, just using control C control V uh, to copy that off to the side so that I can work with it and still retain my original geometry if I need it for anything else all right so this is going to be my main geometry for uh, the waffling process and um, in the next video we're going to start setting that up for uh, laser cutting and then in the following video uh, working with it to uh, create a diagram that explains what I'm doing. Alright, thanks for watching.